Hey everybody, this is Patrick Green TT, and I got a bit of a lesson for some people here on some algo building. Um, I showed part of this algo, I think it was this algo, summer algo a couple days ago, and had some questions come through because people were getting matching values going through these value extractor blocks. And I don't think I explained how these work that well, so I'm going to go through it a little more detailed. And I've got another video where I actually get into a little more detail as well, so I'm going to tweet that out probably next day or two. But this is what's really going on with these value extractor blocks, just so to make sure you get it works. What, what happens is someone came back and said that all of their values in the blocks are coming back the same. I think I understand why that's happening. So let's go through and talk about what's really going on here. What's going on here is we're actually using, I'm using a loop block first. The loop block is actually going to loop through the data that's going on and actually pipe it into these four different blocks. How is it going to pipe it in? It's going to pipe it in because it's going to pulse through four, to, four times and tell these blocks to go through and pull information. What information is it going to pull? We're going back to this, and I think this had to do with getting the result ones. It was the EMA. So what this very terminal block is doing right here, now no, notice the order here. Notice the order. This alert block, or I'm sorry, this loop block is going to send a message. You saw it just pipe through here, go into the enter port, and from there it's going to go through here. It's going to come down and it's going to, it's going to tell this block, hey, go grab information. This block is going to tell this block, hey, go grab information. This block is going to go tell this block, go grab information. This block is going to go grab information, but where is going to grab this one to grab from? Let's go back to where this one's going to grab from. It's going to grab from the analytics block, this formula, analytics zero dot result underscore I. Remember, I, I had to I typed that in to get to that because you can't always find that in the drop down list. But that's so this block right now, this value extractor block is going to pull this data point right here, analytic zero, result underscore I, which is 47,000.0355. Um, this is one back because this is the current, current most recent one, so this is actually going to be one back now. Now this block right here, remember the order flow again, this loop block is telling these blocks to update, so it's going to tell this one to update, this one to update, this one to update. The way I had this set up is this block is going to pull the information from the block preceding it. So if I click into the formula here, you see this one says EMA3. What is EMA3? EMA3, it's telling this block to pull the information that's in this block, EMA3. What's EMA3 doing? EMA3 is going to pull information from EMA2. EMA2 is pulling from EMA1, and EMA1 is pulling from here. So essentially, we're going to start a chain reaction here. This is going to update. It's going to tell this block, EMA4, to go pull this, which is going to tell this to pull, go pull this, which tells this to pull. Go pull this. Now, why is it going in this order? It's going in this order because we want this block, the terminal one, to pull this information before these ones pull in. Otherwise, you're going to have bad information. It's going to be repetitive and it's not going to work right. So you have to you have to daisy chain this. You have to be actually given an order, a sequence to actually go and pull the information from. So that's why I have this block, EMA2, pulling the information from EMA1. EMA3 is pulling from EMA2, EMA4 is pulling from EMA3. It's as simple as that. So that's what I actually do to build this um, daisy chain of historical information, kind of pull a time series. That's the way you can build that. You can build it out and get it out and pull information so you can do some analysis across the board. In this example, I've got more than I actually need. I actually only need two blocks for it, um, two periods for it, but I pulled out four. But that's how this kind of works, and hopefully that clarifies the situation. And I, I do the same thing up here for the close. Close is pulling analytic zero. It's pulling analytic zero close dot i, which is analytic zero close dash i, just like that. And before this block gets to update, I don't know, actually, yeah, before this block updates, these blocks are going to update because this block is going to get the message, same ones, same as down here. It's going to get pinged by the loop block and say, hey, go update information. So what is this close four going to do? It's going to go pull information from close three. And this close three is going to pull information from close two. Close two is going to pull information from close one. Close one is going to pull from right here. That's how we get the daisy chain. That's how we get the information to actually pass through and flow through. And you get a time series analysis. Hopefully that answers the question. If you have any more, just let me know. Happy to help you out as always. Signing off for now. Take it easy.